low glutathione oxidative stress and this inhibition is part of it. There's also clearance of neurotransmitters, which we'll get to in the biopterin pathways. And over here, as we move towards methionine, if you have inadequate protein, what do we always tell our patients to do? Eat more protein and at least smaller amounts of protein throughout the day, not three big meals. I don't know where that came from, but I think if we eat smaller portions more frequently, the protein levels are going to stay more consistent, methylation will stay more consistent, the neurotransmitters will stay more consistent, and I have a paper which documents this as well. So you want to make sure that the protein intake and the absorption is good. What's the point of increasing protein in your patient if they're not chewing their food or their stomach acid is low? So here's your methionine. Um, uh, methionine moves into the SAMe pathway, MAT, Dr. Quigg calls it, requires magnesium and ATP. How many of your patients are magnesium deficient? All of them, for the most part, right? So when you learn that taurine is a really important component for osmotic uh, regularity and electrolyte balance. So it's very important that taurine is happening and I'll show you how taurine is made uh, as well later. Taurine is readily available from the diet, but it's also generated um, to transulfuration. So look at all these inhibitors I've already added to this, what produces SAMe. So we've got nitric oxide, LPS, lipopolysaccharide from bugs, um, hepatitis C and B, carbon tetrachloride, um, uh, I probably screwed that one up, uh, TNF alpha, IL-6, inflammation. Inflammation will inhibit the patient's ability to make SAM.